Matthew, actually 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. <coughs> the title of our lesson tonight is called The Battle for Purity. Amen. The yeah. Battle for Purity. You know, when it comes to purity, our biggest problem, our biggest enemy is us. It's ourselves, honestly. We don't like to admit it. We don't really want to admit that we have a problem with purity. Talk about it, bro. You know, growing up, uh, I didn't know there was any such thing as like being addicted to impurity. I, I didn't know that that existed. You know what I mean? Uh, yet when I look at all of the evidence, when I look at all the the symptoms of somebody who was addicted to impurity, like. Put me right there, man. Mm. Put me right there. Just like with any problem in our life, the first thing that we must do is understand, not just understand, but acknowledge that we have a problem. Mm. we got to acknowledge the problem. You know, some of the greatest men in the Bible struggled with purity. Mm. King David. Mm. Yeah. King Solomon. Yeah. <laughs> Samson. Right? Yeah, These on. are great men. These men won many battles, many victories for the Lord, but they also lost the battle for purity. Mm. Amen. No man is above the battle. Mm. Sexual sin, guys, is powerful. Yeah. And it has its hold on us <laughs> men like nobody's business. Amen. Mm. We're sexual beings. Mm. Yeah. It's just the way that God wired us. And what the world has taught us is, hey, now's the time to get it done, fellas. Mm. Get it? Like, the earlier the better. Yeah. Mm. There are actually cultures where once you hit a certain age, your dad will take you, like it's part of the culture, will take you to a prostitute yeah. to have hey, your first time. Wow. <laughs> there are literally cultures... <laughs> Built around it. Yeah. Sexual immorality, sexual impurity has been around from the very fabric of creation. Mm. Mm. Sinful, sinful fabric of creation. Yeah. Mm. You know, we live in a world that's been baptized with sex, baptized in impurity, and has been pornified. Yeah. 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 Wow. We have to preach this so that we will not fall into temptation. Mm. Oh, no. We cannot lack conviction in this area. We must not ever compromise. Come on, bro. You know, sexual morality in the Greek is porneia, which is where we get our word pornography from, which is interesting that one of the first sins in Galatians 5 is the root word for the very thing that is proliferated along the Internet. Mm -hmm. Sexual immorality, not just immorality, sexual immorality equals porneia. Wow. Mm. Which is any sex outside of the bonds of marriage. Mm. So it's not just looking at porn. It's not just hopping on Instagram, finding some person in a, in a scantily clad or somebody that you're attracted to that you lust and blah, blah, blah. That's not porn. Mm. Mm. Sexual morality and impurity is way bigger than just pornography. Wow. Mm -hmm. First Timothy 5, verse 2 says this. Treat older women as mothers and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Amen. Now, does this say older women that you're not attracted to as mothers? <laughs> younger women that you're not attracted to as sisters? No, there's no qualification. Right. If they're an older woman, they're your mom. If they're a younger woman, they're your sister. Mm. Wow. But oddly enough, even in our society, people will look with lust upon their mothers and even look with lust upon their sisters. Wow. So people will look at this passage and go, oh, well, well, and they'll try to make excuses around it. This is the standard that we have in the church. Amen, bro. Come on, bro. Is we treat older women as mothers. Right. We treat younger women as sisters. 
us. Amen. Yeah. Son. Yeah. We treat them as our own physical sister. Come on, bro. Matthew 5, look at Matthew 5, verse 27. Mm. You know, I want to lift up Malik. Come on, Malik. Come on. Malik, Malik was at Bible Talk. This is uh, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. Wow. And one of the guys that came out to Bible Talk was sitting next to one of our sisters. It was kind of a little bit further away. And he noticed that this, this dude kind of slid on over and put his arm around one of our sisters. Oh. Mm. And Malik, like a good big brother, felt all sorts of stuff. Ah, there it is. Like, oh, there it is. He, he not felt this some, of, some, of, some, of, some of his non-Christian feelings came out. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, oh. Some of that OG came out of him, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate and I respect the fact that after the Bible discussion, he came up to this guy and he pulled him aside and said, hey man, we, you, you don't, your arm around my sister like that. Mm. Oh. We just don't do that. Yeah. We don't we don't do that here. It's my job to protect and, and I'm gonna protect her from you. Mm. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Now as a young Christian, as a young man, he felt a little bit of shame from that. It's like, well, did I say it the right? Was that right? Was it wrong? Was it? And he came to me and was like, bro, that's exactly what you should have done. <laughs> now, maybe you, maybe you were a little hardcore. Uh, you know, maybe you could have like soft pedaled it a little bit. Who knows? But hey, the reality is if that's a man of God, if that guy wants to be a man of God, he's going to respect that. Mm. Yeah. And it turns out he didn't want to respect that. And uh, Malik stood to his guns. Let's go. We yeah. treat the women in this church as mothers and sisters with absolute purity. Mm. But not just in the church. We're to treat the women outside of this church right. as mothers and sisters with absolute mm -hmm. purity. Look at Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 5, verse 27. It says, you have heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. That's one of the Ten Commandments, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. There it is. Yes. Right. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to go into hell. Wow. Come on, bro. This is Jesus' standard of purity. Mm -hmm. There you go. He says it's not just about adultery. Mm. It's about lust. Mm. Right. And how do you deal with this lust? Well, we'll get into that in a second. Now, we can read this. And we can read it as hyperbole, as a, as a, a, as a story or a, an example that's over-exaggerated to make a point. Mm. But Jesus is not over-exaggerated. He literally is saying, if your eye causes you to sin, you should gouge it out. Now, Whoa. there's been monks and there's been you know, people throughout Christian history that have literally done these things. <laughs> because, but here's the problem. If I gouge out one eye, <laughs> is that going to eliminate me from lusting from this eye? No. 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 They didn't get it, bro. I don't even need <laughs> eyes in order to lust. Yeah. I got enough images in my head that I could be blind for the yeah. rest of my life That's and true. still lust. Wow. If your hand causes you to sin, what? Am I, you know, cut it off. I still got another hand. And if I don't got that hand, I still got this foot. <laughs> so on the one hand, it is hyperbole from a standpoint of like, you can cut off your hand, you can gouge out your eye, you're still going to be a sinful person. There you go. Ooh, yeah, so what's the point? Deal radically with this area of your life. Yes. Right. Come on. Eradicate it. Yes. Mm. Lust in the Greek is, epith is epithmia. Which means to long for or desire for something that is forbidden. Mm. Now let me be clear. In today's society, we can't just focus this message on the lust for a woman mm. at a men's midweek. Mm. Yeah. This is encompassing all lust. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. lust after women, yep. lust mm. after men, lust after children, lust after animals, mm. lust after anything. Mm. Mm. It's a desire yep. or a longing for something that is forbidden. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus talking about here? 
lusting after somebody's body, mm. coveting, coveting them in your hearts, taking second glances, checking up, <clears throat> checking them out, up and down, mm -hmm. becoming sexually aroused by them. All emotional lust from talking to somebody that you're attracted to. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. Flirtation. And, of course, masturbation. Yeah. Mm. Now, let me be very clear. Oh. I haven't talked about this subject, mm. one of these probably very soon in the next couple months I will. It is not a sin to be same-sex attracted. It is not. It is not. Mm. Just as it's not a sin to be opposite-sex attracted. Mm. But what you do with that attraction mm. is sin. There you go. Mm. Yeah. What I do with it is what becomes sin. Right. My natural lusts are my natural lusts. What I do with those is sin. Wow. If I give in to those, it's sin. Right. All of us have, been, have grown up in certain pockets of society, in certain proclivities based on what's been done to us or what we've done to other people or what we've been exposed to, all these different things. Different facets, so we could get into psychology, we can get into sociology, we can get into all sorts of crazy stuff. The reality is, it has nothing to do with how you've been brought up. It has everything to do with, you do not sin with that desire. Yeah, mm. yeah. How many of us have had wacky desires, not even sexual desires, but like, like been so enraged that we wanted to like, hurt, hurt somebody? Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, well you didn't. Hopefully you didn't hurt somebody. If you did, then amen, it's sin, right? Yeah. But the desire is just, it's just a thought. It's just a desire. Mm -hmm. It's what we do with it that makes it sinful or not. Yeah. There are people in this world, there might even be people in this room, that have a desire for somebody other than a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, God wants to help guide that desire towards mm -hmm. him. Go on, bro. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you're going to desire what you desire. Mm -hmm. Where you can control that, control it. Amen? Amen. Right. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can. Come on, bro. <clears throat> but don't give in to that thought. Don't give in to right. that Come desire. On, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. <clears throat> if once you do, that becomes sin. Amen, bro. And God says all of it is adultery. Mm -hmm. Masturbation is a horrible sin, but it is not the ultimate end sin. Many times we say, well, I just lusted in my mind, in my heart, but at least I didn't masturbate. Ooh. This is a mandate, this is the standard of Jesus, mm, come on, yeah. is we don't lust. Right. We don't lust. Mm. Lust is the sin. Masturbation right. is your end result of the lust. Right, yeah. Yes, it's sin. But you started sinning way before you went ahead and did anything about it. Mm. Masturbation is not the standard of lust. Everything before is still lust. And this comes from the sin of compromise in our life. Mm. And the Bible says it's a salvation issue. Mm. Jesus says here, better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. What is he talking about? Lust will send you to hell. Mm -hmm. Just as right. sure as you acting upon it, the lust will send you to hell. The right. thought will mm -hmm. send you to hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. come on, bro. Wow. The fantasy, the fascination mm -hmm. will send you to hell just as much as you acting upon it. Amen, bro. Come on. Mm -hmm. The Greek word used for causing you to sin in verse 29 and 30 is the same word used when Jesus talks about the apostles falling away in Matthew 26. Take a look at this. Matthew 26, 31. Come on, bro. This is awesome, bro. So in Matthew chapter 5, when he says... If one part of your body causes you to sin, what he's saying is the same thing as what he says, Matthew 26, verse 31. It says, Then Jesus said to them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. Mm. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. 
So when we're being caused to sin, by the way, you're causing yourself to sin. Mm -hmm. Don't get yeah. right because we we are our greatest enemy. Mm -hmm. Now we have a couple other enemies that help in this process. We'll get to that in a minute. No. But you got to begin with your own lack of discipline in your heart and in your mind to go, no, I'm not going to choose that. Mm. No, I'm going to choose this instead. Amen. Come on, bro. Nice. There you go. But it's a commitment issue. Mm. If we're going to fall away, when we choose to lust, we're, we're choosing to fall away. Mm. Now, this isn't a fall away that automatically leads to a loss of salvation, but we're on our road down the path. Mm. Come on, bro. Yeah. We need hearts that are fully committed to God, and then God will strengthen us. This is 2 Chronicles 69. For the eyes of the Lord range right. throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. This is the standard. Absolute purity. Full commitment to this. You know, oddly enough, the context of this passage in 2 Chronicles 16 is pretty tragic. It's about King Asa, a man who was once on fire for God. For 35 years, he became king really young. Mm. But then he started to compromise, and he fell away, just like how it says in Matthew 5. Yeah. Mm. We cannot compromise and look for comfort in our hearts in different places other than God. Mm. And that's really what lust is, guys. Think about the times in which you've given into lust. I guarantee if you ask yourself, what was I feeling right before I gave into lust? You're feeling alone, mm. you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling all guilt. sorts of things. Yeah. 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 Guilt, shame, etc. Yeah. And so our hearts are searching for that place of comfort. Mm. For us married guys, mm. we can even go after our wives, which mm. isn't sin, but we can have them satisfy right. these Cravings, which again aren't sinful cravings because they're in the confines of marriage. Mm. <laughs> but we can use our wives as uh, as idols instead of going to our wives in in like righteousness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Come on, bro. The challenge that I have before you, before all of us, is we cannot compromise in our battle against purity. Mm. And not masturbating is not the standard. Mm. Not lusting is the standard. Mm. Treating our the women in our lives with absolute purity is the standard. Right. We have to look away from the objects of lust, not flirt with them, and not watch things or listen to music that makes us stumble. Mm. If I grabbed any of your phones right now, and I looked at your search history, mm. or I looked at the apps that you have on your phone, or I looked at what you were looking at on social media, mm. would you be innocent? Mm. Mm. It's a rhetorical question only you can answer. Mm. If you're not, then this message is for you. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this message is for all of us because none of us are innocent. Right. Mm -hmm. You might be innocent today because you maybe, right before you got here, like purged your search history or deleted the apps or whatever. <laughs> oh, what's going to happen in another couple days? Because I've been, let me, let me just be honest, guys, because I've been there. Yeah. Where I hop on Instagram and I... You know, at first I'm looking for looking at things that are cool, you know what I mean? Things that are inspiring and following people, curating my feed, and then all of a sudden I'm there, I'm bored, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. I have a little fight with the wife. I'm not feeling loved by the kids. Finances are tight. Like, pick your reason. And all of a sudden I'm just straying just a little bit and I go to that search button and of course if you scroll long enough there's something on there that's kind of looking like something and that leads you to something that kind of looks a little more like something. Come on, bro. Yeah. And then you go and blow it one way or the other and then you delete the app. Like, I'm not going there anymore. I'm deleting this app. And then what's going to happen in another two days, three days, week? It's real easy. Let's go back to the app store. Let's download it. Let's, yeah. I'm not going to, I won't give into it this time. I, I got deep conviction now. <laughs> Whoa. Famous last words. God is talking to us. We have to make Jesus our standard of purity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The question that must be asked is, will we watch or listen to the things that we do or say the things that we say if Jesus Christ himself was right next to us? Mm -hmm. Point number one is God's will for purity. Go to 1 Thessalonians. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 4, God's will for purity. Amen. Come on. Come on, buddy. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look here in verse 3. The Bible says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual morality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. There were people in the Thessalonian church that in their lust were taking advantage of brothers and sisters. Mm. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God and the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh. Oh, bro. Damn. That's all I got to say about this passage is yeah. damn. Oh, God's will for our lives is that we live in absolute purity. Mm. Come on, bro. Mm. We doubt this plan because we lack faith that God will take care of our sexual desires. Mm. Those of us, those of uh, guys, I've been single before. Mm. I know what it's like. I've been single as a non-Christian, and I've been single as a Christian. I know what it's like. It's not easy to mm. live this life. Mm. Now, it's fairly easy to live the life of a single person as a non-Christian. No big deal. In fact, it's actually hailed as like, whoa, you're, you're saving yourself? That's awesome, man. Mm. Like, nowadays, purity on some level is like, cool. Mm -hmm. But if you blow it, it's not that big a deal. Mm, come on, bro. <laughs> but ultimately, we doubt God's plan to take care of our needs. Mm. And yes, up to our sexual desires. Mm. We don't believe that God's way is better at times. It's like John 10.10. 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus came to give us life to yeah. the full, but the thief, Satan, and sin has come to kill and destroy. Mm. Lust will never fulfill what it promises. Mm. Mm -hmm. And actually, lust makes you less of a man. True. Mm -hmm. that's because true. a man's job is to pursue a woman mm -hmm. with absolute purity mm -hmm. to provide and protect. Mm -hmm. And here you have this half-naked person on your phone, or this fully naked person on your phone. Did you have to work for that? Mm -hmm. Did you have to do anything for that but press a couple buttons? Mm, wow. No, you didn't have to work for that. It's free. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. Wow. That's, that's crazy. And we wonder why men aren't men these days. Amen. Mm. Because everything that they want, that they think they want, is given to them for free at their fingertips. They'll click those buttons. Mm. Mm. Wow. Less never fulfills what it promises. My second challenge is that we can't use the excuses of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. We have to hold to this scripture and live in absolute purity. It's all about how close we are to God. Mm. You know, I was asked today, six months in to this church, roughly six months, it'll be six months at the end of March, mm. how's the church doing? Uh -huh. What's the spirit of the church? Mm. And you know the answer that came to my mind? Tired. Uh -huh. Come on, bro. Mm. Tired. Mm. And then my wife chimes in, we're, we're talking, and she goes, well, you know, when Eric says tired, here's what he really means, because she knows me. <laughs> because my, my default position when I'm feeling a whole bunch of things is tired. Mm. How you doing, Eric? I'm tired. So I tell my wife. Amen. But she brought something else, and that's sometimes we, we, we can fall into this of feeling uninspired. Mm -hmm. I think we as a men's ministry are hard workers. Amen. I think we're tough. I think we gut it out. Mm -hmm. We can put one foot in front of the other. I think perseverance is, is, a, is a good thing in us. Mm -hmm. 
but we can lack inspiration in that perseverance. We can work to work, not work because we're working for God. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that all come from? Our quiet times. Mm. How was your quiet time today? Did you even have a quiet time today? Mm. Did you have a little quick prayer on your way to work? Did you have to work early? And by early, I mean at like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. And so you didn't wake up at 7 in order for have at least a 30-minute quiet time. Mm. Are your quiet times uninspiring? Are you just reading mm. to read? Are you digging into something? Are you eagerly examining every day? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's all about how close we are to God. The closer we are to God, the more sin repulses us. The more sin looks gross to us, the more we'll be like, no. Mm. When we drive away from God, mm. we look for love in the wrong places. Mm. We look for fulfillment in the wrong places. And you know what? Let me just be honest. Maybe it's not lust today for you guys. Maybe it's not lust. Maybe you're looking to your your income. Maybe you're looking to comfort. You've got a house. You've got kids. You've got uh, this. You've got a job. You've got Mm -hmm. good grades. You've got this or that. You're looking to those things. That's your lust, maybe. Mm. That's what you're coveting. That's your God. That's what you're going to for fulfillment instead of to God. That'll lead you right into regular lust. Wow. you got to stay close to God to stay pure. Mm. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So we've got to trust God's plan. Again, whether you're single or married, you've got to trust God's plan. Mm. <laughs> The passage teaches that God punishes impurity. It says the Lord will punish all those who commit such sins. Well, what sins is that? Sexual morality. Passionate lust. He will punish. I thought God's a loving God. I thought God is a good God. He's a good father. He, He loves us. He wants to take care of his children. He wants to give us good gifts. Yeah, true. I love my son, but when he blows it, what is he going to get? Punishment. (laughs) It's called the Lord's discipline. And it's meant to aid him and teach him to make a different choice, a different decision next time. Sexual sin leads to absolute destruction. We've got to get a conviction that God punishes impurity. So now that we have a deep conviction about impurity, let's talk about God's battle plan. Come on, bro. God's battle plan for purity, my second and last point. God's battle plan for purity. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. All right. I love the book of Ephesians. One of these days we'll preach a whole sermon series throughout the book of Ephesians. It's going to be awesome. Come on, bro. But for now, let's just look at just a couple chapters here in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Look here in verse 1. The Bible said, follow God's example, therefore, Mm. as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual morality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Some of our impurity is our mouths. I totally agree. Even though we've been sanctified, we still cuss. We still use impure language. We call things that we shouldn't call them. Of course. Because we've not fully disengaged ourselves from the world. Mm. And so we use like different colorful language. Maybe it's not as bad as the F word or the A word <laughs> or whatever these, but we, we use we use other language that isn't as bad. Again, mm. who's the standard? Ooh. You're not the standard. Whether you think it's bad or not is not the standard. Mm-hmm. God is the standard. Yeah. Or greed. He puts greed right there next to sexual morality or impurity. Mm. You know, a little, a little, little tiny, little, little 
Shank here for when it comes to missions. <laughs> you know, if, if we if we aren't going after missions with all of our heart, mm, come on, bro. Is it an issue of greed? Mm. It is. Now, if you're giving your whole heart, amen. There's no greed there. Mm. You're going after it. You're doing everything you can. But if you just started now mm -hmm. to make up your missions Ooh. to give to God, <laughs> yeah, come on, bro. That's greed. Right. Mm. It's greed by way of undisciplined, being undisciplined. Yeah. Mm. God puts these things in immorality and if immorality and impurity, oh my gosh. Like if somebody in the church was sleeping around, we would deal with that in half a second. There probably is not a disciple in this room that'd be like, oh man, we gotta we gotta get with this bro. We gotta help him out. We gotta show him some scriptures, we gotta help him repent. But what about greed? Mm. Greed is a form of impurity. Right. Says these are improper for God's holy people. Mm. Again, nor should there be insanity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. Bank on this, Paul says. No immoral, no impure, or no greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has it in any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. And of God. What does that mean? That means if you're impure, if you're immoral, and if you're greedy, you're in fire, you're in danger of the fires of hell. That's Whoa! Says, bro. Wow. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. These are things where you can quickly lose your salvation. Wow. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Mm. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. They have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. What are you doing in secret? Would it be shameful to mention? But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. By the way, that can be a scary comment, or that can be a completely, like, wonderful comment. Yeah. Mm. Because you can actually walk in the light, and it can be an awesome thing. Mm. Or you can be exposed, and that's never good. If somebody has to expose your sin, and God will expose it, trust yeah. me, yeah. you cannot hide right. from God. Yeah. The Bible says some men's sins go before them, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them, meaning you're going to get found out in this life. Some men's sins trail behind them, which means when you get to those pearly gates, it's going to catch up with you, and it's not going to be good. Mm. Before we can fully know the battle plan, we have to understand how this sin forms and we find this actually back in Ephesians 4. So we get the battle plan from Ephesians 5, and we'll break this down in a minute. But let's go back to Ephesians 4, next chapter back, look in verse 17. He says, So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. There's impurity and greed there together. Wow. Mm. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ mm. and were taught in him in accordance with the truth wow. that is in Jesus. What does he say? Guys, you're living contrary to what I taught you. Mm. This is not the life that I taught you how to live. Wonder he says... You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, mm. and to put on a new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, not fake righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are angry, and give the devil a foothold. You know, there are three enemies that we have as disciples of Jesus. Number one is the flesh. This is ourselves. It's ourselves. Yeah. Mm. It's our own thought processes. It's our own habits. It's our own mind. Mm. 
the desires that we feel. We have the world. This is billboards. This is walking around on campus. I have never seen so many midriffs in my life than moving down here. You guys know what I mean by that? That's like girls that wear shirts that don't go all the way down. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's like, this is the belly button capital of the world. <laughs> and I became a disciple in Long Beach, California, 20 minutes away from the actual beach. Wow. You'd think, we're, you'd think we'd be in the beach city or something like that. It's like, first of all, that's not even cool. Yeah. <clears throat> like, that, like, I don't want to see that. Because most of the people wearing it aren't, like, it's not, like, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I digress. But it, the world is, is the external world that's coming at us. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have the demonic forces, demons and unclean spirits that come and attack us, put thoughts in our minds that we choose to obey those thoughts. You know, Ephesians 4 says that it begins in our mind. Christianity is a battle of the mind. Then, after losing the battle there, there's the false understanding about ourselves. Then you are separated from God, it says in verse 18. Then you can get to the hardness of heart. Impurity does not make you feel guilty anymore. You're numb to it. Your conscience is seared as with a hot iron, the Bible says in Romans. Someone will need to hammer your heart like how Jeremiah describes the word of God. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Some of us, impurity is such a normal way of our life that we're hard-hearted to it. It's like, ah, oh, well, if I give into it, you know, once a month, it keeps me from, from being impure the rest of the time. I've thought this, guys. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, these, these aren't like new teachings, right? I'm not like giving you new ways of thinking about how to be impure and still think you're okay. Because I guarantee you, most of you thought the same thing. Yeah. Well, I'd rather blow it once, and I'm good for another two and a half months, three months. I can, I can go three months. Better to be pure for three months and blow it once than, than start it. Yeah. We've done it. Mm. It's Satan. It's demonic mm. spirits that get in and jack up our thought process. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> My challenge is to have people in your life to call you to a standard mm. and that you be transparent with. Mm. When was the last time you got open about your sin? Mm. Mm. And I'm not talking about like that one text that you send every Sunday. I'm talking about, like, when you're about to blow it, you choose to get open. Some of you actually haven't gotten open about any sin in a long time. Some of you do the once a week thing. You just kind of let it pile up, and then once a week you just dump it, you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, it's, like, it's like a sewer system. Oh. Once a season you get all the garbage sucked out of the sewer system and it gets dumped and now you got a clean sewer system guys it's a sewer system wow wow it's the sad. only way to walk in the light is to live in the light yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. get wow. constantly open Come on. this keeps you out of sin guys this, yeah. this, this isn't like eric trying to be controlling yeah. this isn't like the church trying to your disciple or yeah. trying to blah 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 no no, no. Oh, this good. is this is me going guys walk in the light yeah oh, no. Come on, bro. Oh, no, bro. Some of you walk around like death, and it's because you don't get open. No wonder you walk around like death, because you're like you're like it's got sin inside of you that's like like burying you. Surprise, you're smiling at all. I'm just trying to help you like smile. You know what I'm like? Be lighthearted. You know what I'm saying? I can't get up here and preach. I gotta like like I can't like I gotta get this stuff out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, come on, bro. Yeah, come on, bro. Now, he talks about anger at the end of this. In, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Anger is not the issue here. Anger is not like this peak sin, like, okay, if I commit anger, oh my gosh. No, no, no. What he's saying is anger is an example. Now, anger to be sure, right? But among other strong negative emotions. 
you got to deal with it. Mm. Before you put your head on the pillow, mm. you've got to get rid of that strong negative emotion. What does that mean? That might mean that you're doing an all-night prayer until it's gone. Mm. Mm. Or you're calling up a brother or you're texting a brother or whatever, leaving them a voice message and getting open about it and praying about it so that you go to bed resolved. Mm. Maybe not fully resolved, but resolved to get resolved. Yes. Mm. It invites Satan to have a foothold in our lives when we choose to obey the demonic thoughts versus giving them over to Christ. Right. Welcome. Now... Let's go to Ephesians 5. Let's talk about the battle plan. Come on, brother. Nine-step battle plan to win the battle for purity. Let's go. Come on. Ephesians 5, verse 1. It says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. Mm. Dwell on God's love and God's view about yourself. You're a child of God. A child of God. Amen. God loves you. He wants what's best for you. He wants to take care of you. Not focusing on how we view ourselves, people who struggle with sexual sin usually have a low view about themselves. Mm. By the way, that's not humility, that's pride. It's arrogance. Mm. You think more about yourself, you're just thinking more negatively about yourself. It's still pride and arrogance. Christ is our great reward. We must dwell on this love and feel that love. And sometimes that love that we feel, we don't feel it, we have to choose to feel it. Because we're focusing on the truth and not on what Satan wants us to focus on. Mm -hmm. That's step number one. Follow God's example as dearly loved children. Step number two, Ephesians 5, verse 3, but among you there must not even be a hint of sexual morality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. We all should have at least one, if not two, men in our lives that we can get fully, completely, and utterly transparent with. Mm. Now let me qualify. I, don't, I, don't, I, I wish I didn't have to say this, but let me qualify this. These men should be disciples of Jesus. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's what, yeah. You're confessing with your buddy that you're drink, you used to drink with, yeah. or smoke weed with, or, or, or go to parties with. That, 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 that's not going to help you. First of all, they'll probably think you're weird <laughs> and go, why are you getting open with me about this? I just did that two days ago. Like, this is totally fine. This is what we do. Dude. We should have an accountability partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul is talking to a church, and he says that we have a biblical responsibility to make sure that there is not a hint of impurity in the church. Yeah. So do you have men in your life that are hunting you down and going, bro, are you doing okay? What's going on? Everything all right? They're not going to let you weasel out of it. They're not going to let you squirm around it. Mm. And are you then either A, in response to them asking, or B, you're forthcoming about it. You don't have to be asked, actually getting open with them. Mm. Walking in the light. Step number three, Ephesians 5, verse 4. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. We need to speak words of faith. Amen. Mm. Yeah. The way we talk reflects the heart. The way we joke reflects the heart. The things that come out of our mouth reflects what is inside. Yeah. We need to speak things into existence to overcome impurity, and that happens through faith. Romans 4.17 says, talks about the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that are not. Amen, bro. Speak faith. Mm. We cannot be deceived by empty words, he says. There are a lot of persuasive words and arguments in the world that justify impurity. Mm. There is no justification for impurity. We are out of this world. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. Holy people, not worldly people. Mm. If you get most of your theology, most of your direction, most of your inspiration, most of your doctrine, most of your information from external sources without a biblical worldview, then you're being warped mm. by the world. Yeah, I want to 
don't convince yourself that masturbation is not a, a sin, mm. or that lust is not a sin, mm. or that one is better than the other. Mm. All sin is the same before yeah. God. Yeah. All sin is going to send us to hell if yeah. we don't repent. Oh, yeah. oh, no. Number four, Ephesians chapter five, verse seven. It says, therefore, do not be partners with them. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be misled, which means we could be. Bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. If I looked at and did a time audit of how much time you spend with disciples, would I see a lot or would I see very little? Mm -hmm. Whether on the phone, whether in person, are you spending time with people that are helping strengthening you spiritually? Or are you spending more time with people like you were in the world? Mm. You will be, the Bible doesn't say good company makes bad company better. Mm. Mm. If it did, it would. Mm -hmm. I think Paul would have said, hey, bad company corrupts good character. So be careful, but you know what? When you go into that bad company, you're going to be able to make them good character. Oh. Now, we are supposed to let our light shine before men that may see their, their good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. We, we are supposed to be a light in a dark world. We talked about that on Sunday. But you can't expect to spend most of your time in the world and somehow not be affected by it. Mm. There you go. Surround yourself with other men who want to be pure. Watch who you hang out with, even online. You know, one of the things I talked about was curating my feed. Yeah. I, I, I'll, somebody will post something on Instagram, and I'll like, like it, and I'll go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this person in mind. Mm. I'm going to see what they're going to say. I give them maybe two or three reels, and if they don't start like really saying stuff that like gets me fired up mm. and like helps me like in life, I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Companies that don't inspire me, mm. products that don't serve me. Mm -hmm. Some of us, if we just look at our news feeds, like we're being influenced by the world through our news feeds. Mm -hmm. Not to mention going to work every day and talking with people and these kind of like, like the only way for us to go into the darkness to be a light is for us to be strong in the light. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And it begins there. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We can't compromise in falling into sin. Number five, Ephesians 5, verse 10, it says, and find out what pleases the Lord. We could snack on that for another month. <laughs> There's a great quiet time for you to have tomorrow. Mm. Do a search in the Bible, on the things that please God. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. Look at phrases like, this pleases God, or God was pleased, or mm -hmm. any, any variation of that. Mm -hmm. Find out what pleases the Lord. Yeah. Mm. We have to replace our thoughts with God's thoughts. Right. What is God thinking today? What is God doing today? Mm. What is going to please God today? We have to focus our mentality on God, focus it forward, and we have to have a short memory about our sin. Get open, move on. Mm. Philippians 3.13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm. Number six, Ephesians 5, 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. We must expose sin in each other, holding on to Matthew 18. What does Matthew 18 say? Matthew 18, verse 15, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And it goes on. We have to be those that speak the truth in love to one another. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we need to be completely open. Confess everything. Mm -hmm. First John says, walk in the light as he is in the light. Well, how is he in the light? The Bible says there's no darkness in him at all. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like saying 99% of the truth, am I still in the darkness? Yeah. 
They're either as light or as dark. I'm either getting open or I'm not. Mm. Yeah. Wow, go on, bro. Number seven, Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. He goes on to talk about wives submitting to your husbands. Later on in chapter six, he talks about children obey your parents. What is he really talking about here? And he goes on and talks about obey your earthly masters. Mm. We have to make sure that our relationships are in good health across the board. Mm -hmm. Not just our Christian relationships. How's your, how's your uh, relationship with your boss? Mm. How's your relationship with your coworkers? Mm. Come on, bro. If you're a manager, if you're a leader at your workplace, how is your relationship with those that you lead? How is your relationship with those, your vendors, with those that serve you? How, how's your relationship when you go into a fast food restaurant? Are you a jerk? Or are you loving and kind and nice, no matter how they treat you? Yes. Yeah. We have to make sure that our relationships are in good health. Come on, bro. Yeah. Amen. Paul was writing one continuous thought here, showing that all these things go hand in hand. My relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, and my relationships at work all go together. Mm. Good, healthy relationships as explained in this passage, are key to living a pure and healthy life for Christ. Mm. Number eight, Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Mm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. Mm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Mm. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. Mm. Yeah, come on. <coughs> we have to be aware of the battle in the heavenly realms. Yeah. This is a spiritual battle. Yeah. Mm. I think one of the greatest lies that <coughs> Satan has convinced the church on is that he doesn't exist. Mm. And that it's just you. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. You're thinking these thoughts. Yeah. You are choosing these different. Now, to be sure, you are choosing them and you are choosing to think them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where do they come from? They come from the spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you're aware of these things, then you'll know, whoa, 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 whoa. this isn't me. I don't want to be like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to blow in my purity. I don't want to treat this sister this way. I don't want to treat this woman this way, this man this way, this kid this way. I don't want to do any of this. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this has got to come from somewhere, and it's coming from Satan. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to be aware of the spiritual battle. You've got to know the truth of where you're at in light of the word of God. And then be on your knees and pray because it's a spiritual battle. Amen, Finally, number nine, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's wrap up here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. It says, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. Now, why would he say, don't fall, if you think you're standing firm? Mm -hmm. The key phrase there is, if you think you are. Mm -hmm. Do you know you are, or do you think? Mm -hmm. We can't get too cocky. Yep. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Mm. What's number nine? We've got to be humble. Mm. Yeah. There's always a way out of sin and temptation. Which means there's always a way out of impurity. If we think we're standing firm, we've got to be careful that we don't fall. In fact, Satan will go after you even more when you think you're doing well. Right. Wow. If you think you're doing well, that's when he's going to go after you. You have to have sober judgment. 
We have to have a conviction that hell is right there waiting to snatch us. Yeah. Wow. But God will provide a way out. Come on, bro. Amen, bro. Come on. You know, we just watched, I, I, we did, I did two cross studies yesterday. And that inspired me with the staff on Tuesday night to watch The Passion of the Christ. Mm. And in watching that, I go, I have not even come close to the kind of pain and suffering that he experienced for mm -hmm. those that day and a half. Not even close mm -hmm. in my struggle against sin. Mm -hmm. Which is why the Hebrew writer says, you've not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood, so mm -hmm. like, keep going. Mm -hmm. My final challenge for us tonight is, know God's will for your life and follow his battle plan. Now we are all equipped with the scriptures to fight these satanic attacks as they come our way. And if we do all of these things, we will win the battle for purity. I love you, my brothers, very much.